Hi guys, Gadget Girl Kylie here, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Wonder Book, Book of Spells. And we're continuing on from where we left off now. And uh, we're now on Chapter 2, Part 2. Chapter 2, Part 2. The Revealing Charm. This useful little charm will allow you to uncover messages hidden by other wizards, so pay attention. You should read about this chapter first, or you can just turn the page to start your first Let's spell. Read. The Revealing Charm will reveal invisible ink and messages hidden by magical means. This spell is able to overcome most basic concealment charms, so be warned. Any plans for mischief hidden with invisible ink can easily be uncovered by wizarding parents and teachers alike. That was very revealing. Interesting specimen? Ah, Miranda Goshawk has left us another tale about this spell. Pull those glowing words up off the page to hear the story. Another little We're going play. To hear another wondrous wizarding tale this time about the power of the revealing charm. Want to read the story? Remember, you can always cancel the story anytime. Many magical researchers use invisible ink to hide their work from rivals, so the revealing charm is essential to serious scholars. While well, keeping secrets. Famed arithmancer Bridget Wenlock was so protective of her discoveries that she wrote exclusively in Invisible Ink. Not to mention writing upside down, back to front, and in atrocious handwriting. Extra core, careful. Wenlock was famous for her absent-mindedness as well as her paranoia. So extra cautious and would often then, jot notes in Invisible Ink on, oh, another missing word. What did Bridget write her calculations on? Oh, too quick, you need to hold down the T button. Ah, yes. She would often jot notes in invisible ink on scraps of paper. Before promptly losing them. She could frequently be seen retracing her steps through her hometown of Tinworth attempting to use the revealing charm on every scrap of paper she came across in search of a lost arithmancy calculation. When Locke first scribbled down her groundbreaking theorem on the magical properties of the number seven at breakfast one day, apparently on the back of an envelope using her usual invisible ink. She then proceeded to send her cousin a letter using what she later believed to be the very envelope concealing the theorem. Oh dear, that's not good. Soon realising her mistake, Wenlock seized her broom and managed to overtake the... over. No, that's not <laughs> how it goes. I just do these things sometimes to see what happens. Flying penguins! <laughs> she was knocked off her broom. Of course, she managed to overtake the owl carrying the letter in mid-flight. The pair engaged in a fierce mid-air tussle as Wenlock tried to recover the envelope. Post office owls take mail tampering very seriously and will refuse to give up their deliveries to anyone that but the addressee. Awesome. After suffering several nips and scratches, Wenlock resorted to following the owl to her cousin's house in John O'Groats. But after finally retrieving the envelope from her bemused Whose house was Bridget visiting? Can you remember? Yes, she retrieved troll. it from her Troll. I should cousin, have said troll. <laughs> but her revealing charm revealed nothing but a cake recipe. <laughs> which she had jotted down that morning. She later found the real calculation scrawled on a sugar packet still sitting on her kitchen table. After all that effort... Ah! 
there you have it. Now, are you ready to use the revealing charm to uncover some mysteries of your own? Indeed, I am. To learn to cast this charm and start uncovering the invisible. So once again, guys, I have to go through the process of trying to say the spell. However, the eye camera doesn't pick it up. I cannot skip this. I need to go through it before I can unlock the wand action. That's in the video description. Here, we'll learn the gesture and incantation to reveal things hidden by magic. You need to learn the magic words for the spell. Point at the glowing words with your wand, then pull the T button. Apparesium. The incantation to magically reveal hidden writing or markings is apparesium. Say the incantation aloud. Ready? One, two, three. Apparesium. You'll have to speak up. Apparesium. Louder. Try saying the incantation aloud. Apparesium. Trying a non-verbal spell, eh? Advanced stuff. Time to learn the wand gesture. Pull up the gesture diagram. The wand gesture for the revealing charm is a loop and cross. Loop your wand from right to left and back again. Good stuff. Can you trace the shape again from here? Apparesium. That's right. That's it. Well done. Now, whenever you see a little glint like that, it means there's something hidden by magic. Flick your wand towards the glint to try out the revealing charm. There we go. Oh, I had a feeling our esteemed author would have hidden a little something for you. Beware the Sphinx. It guards its secrets jealously. Sphinxes, eh? Perhaps Miranda is giving us a clue to this chapter's test. Ready to move on? You found everything! I bet you'll need this spell to find hidden clues in the test, so keep an eye out. Ready to move on? Indeed I am. Ah yes, the engorgement and shrinking charms. It's amazing how useful it can be to grow and shrink things with magic. Time to learn the incantations. But so that again, become all overgrown. See if you can use your wand to shift those pumpkins out of the way. These straightforward but surprisingly dangerous charms cause certain things to swell or shrink. You will be learning both charms together so that you can always undo an over-enthusiastic cast. There is thus no excuse for having accidentally shrunk your homework down to microscopic size or for allowing a giant toad to rampage through your school's flower bed. Time to learn the incantations. But that picture's become all overgrown. See if you can use your wand to shift those pumpkins out of the way. Interesting thing to collect. Engorgio. The incantation to make things grow is Engorgio. Say it now. Three, two, one. Engorgio. You'll have to speak up. Engorgio. Louder. Try saying the incantation aloud. I said it weird the second time. Engorgio. I can't quite hear you. Let's move on for now. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. To magic... Let's move on. You're not ready to learn the spell gestures yet. Go back a page to learn the incantations first. I have, haven't I? Engorgio. The incantation to make things grow is 
Engorgio. Say it now. Three, two, one. Engorgio. I can't hear you. Try saying the incantation. Engorgio. Try shouting the incantation. You need to put real feeling behind it. Engorgio. Never mind, we can try that later. Reducio. Oh, there we go. To magically shrink things, speak the incantation Reducio. Say it clearly now. One, two, three. Reducio. I can't hear you. Try saying the incantation. Reducio. Louder. Try saying the incantation aloud. Reducio. Never mind, we can try that later. Right, time to learn the gestures for these charms. Turn the page to move on. The wand movements for these spells are the same, but upside down. We'll learn the engorgement charm first. Pull up the text with your wand to begin. To make things swell, draw an arrow shape. Engorgio. Great. Once more, this time draw Engorgio. the shape from memory. That's it. That's one down. Right, now the shrinking charm. Making things Reducio. shrink uses a wand gesture pointing down. Well done. Now make the gesture once Reducio. more, this time from memory. That's it. Just like in Gorgio, you point at an object and hold the T button to make it shrink. Ah, the book's given you a pumpkin to practice on. Start off shrinking it. First, try shrinking that pumpkin Reducio. using the shrinking charm. Right, you've cast the spell. Now point your wand at the pumpkin. Then hold the T button. I'll hold the T button. I was holding the wrong button oh, then. That's tiny. Now let me see you using Gorgio to make it massive. And Gorgio. Keep engorging it. And let's see how big it can go. Oh my! <laughs> Giant pumpkin! Impressive. Can it go big? Ah, yes. Well, uh, that can happen. Anyway, you've proven your engorgement and shrinking skills are up to scratch. You're a dab hand at shrinking and engorging. Turn the page now to practice these spells. Right, you'll need to engorge and shrink things to pass this chapter's final test. So let's practice. Pull up that illustration with your wand to start the exercise. You'll now have a chance to practice the engorgement and shrinking charms on some creatures. Don't worry, it won't do them any harm. With that said, it is not advisable to practice engorging or shrinking your own pets for homework practice. Well, no. Bad idea. <laughs> At least not until you're certain that you can reverse the effects. Oh, someone's gone wild with engorgement and shrinking charms in here. You'll be using your two new spells to return things to their normal sizes. What are they? And it looks like this place has a gnome infestation. See that round rolled up thing? That is a gnarl. But it's too small to chase off the gnome. Try engorging it. Engorgio. That's right. How's it gone? Go and get him. Yeah, chase him away. Let's see you make that gnarl nice and big. Well done. Gnarls might look like muggle hedgehogs, but they're fierce enough to fight off a gnome. Another gnarl and gnome, equally sized, so neither's giving an inch. Shrink the gnome to tip the scales. 
Reducio. Yes. Don't shrink the gnarl and gorge it. And Gorgio. Make one of the gnomes smaller with Reducio. There we go. That's it. That gnome's not happy, but the gnarls were here first. These huge gnomes are kicking the poor gnarls around. Shrink the gnomes and engorge the gnarls to turn the tables. Reducio. Well remembered. And Gorgio. You good? There's nothing worse than a bully. Shrink the gnomes down to size and using Gorgio to give the gnarls a bit of a boost. There we go. Well done. You've mastered magical engorgement and shrinking, two helpful wizarding abilities. Sweet. Let's find out how you did. Better than the last test. Well, there you with are. With fire. <laughs> and shrinking like an old hand. Well done. You've definitely got the hang of this spell. Take ten house points. I think I lost some points by shrinking one of them by mistake. Now all that remains is this chapter's test. Turn the page to begin. Yeah. You're that much closer to wizarding great. It's time for this chapter's test. Remember, you'll need all of the four spells that you've learned. Take a moment to make sure you remember them, then pull up the words on the page to begin the test. I actually have this little sheet here because I have such a bad memory that I've been writing them down. I'm actually missing one. I'm missing um, the reveal one. So I'll just draw that now. And also the... Uh, Still practicing your spells? Gorgio Reducio. I think you're ready to complete this chapter's test. Gorgio Pull up the glowing words to Reducio. begin. Because on the last test, I forgot one of the spells and I felt so bad, but I have such rubbish memory. So let's begin now. I know it's kind of like cheating a bit, but there we go. <laughs> In this chapter, we've learnt to create fire, reveal invisible ink, conjure birds and change the size of things. Now it's time to give your skills a real test, in a place where only Gringotts curse breakers have trod before. You'll need each of your new spells to pass. Good luck, tread carefully, and remember, it is imprudent to annoy a sphinx. So we're going to get to see a sphinx. How magical. Merlin's beard. A sphinx. Remember what Miranda said. These cunning creatures delight in puzzles and mysteries. I bet this one's hidden a puzzle around here. Can you find it? Yes! Excellent. When you're ready, flick your wand sharply to see if there's a puzzle to be revealed. Well we revealed. Now, let's see what this cryptic cat has to say for itself. Three trials you must pass to prove your worth. Well, that was cheery. Rare creatures, Blunt. sphinxes, and terribly dangerous, if you get the wrong answer. Ah, oh, this must be the first of the trials. I wonder what's needed here. Well, you could start by finding a way to chase those creepy crawlies off this poor chap. There we ah, go. Yes. Good thinking. Didn't work, the other Those two. Birds will chase off the bugs.
<laughs> Look at that. It seems Feathers here just wanted a few friends. I Aww. think you've passed your first trial. Ah, this must be trial number two. It looks like a torch bearer, except that both his torches have gone out. I bet we can do something about that. What's the solution here? What spell could you use? Well done. There we go. Three trials, the Sphinx said. What's next? I've I not wonder? had to look at my cheat sheet yet. <laughs> Other than for, I think I did for the birds, though. I forgot that Nearly one. Nearly there. Trial number three looks straightforward. My guess is you need Engorgio. to make things a bit more balanced. There we go. Still growing. Looks like this trial was a trap. Oh, he's digging into the book. It's got Looks like that it. monster got away for now. Just brush that sand away. Let's see if he's burrowed into your book. Yes, he has. Steady now. My word. A sandstorm. Oh no. Quick, hold your breath. on earth have we ended up I can just see some torches light them so we can see where we are well remembered excellent that's the first now like Merlin's beard an ancient Egyptian tomb what's that noise more scorpions find a way to get rid of them before they get too close Things are more than enough to knock you out. Oh, watch out! Enough of those things will certainly knock you out. Do they not? Are they not they scared of fire? Weapon. Quick, try another spell before you're stung again. Oh, they got you again. Uh, Can you hear me? Whew, you had me worried there. Let's try again. Those things are too tough to simply destroy. You must use a spell to get rid of them. If you need help, remember you can just press the triangle button to get a hint. Oh, hang on, I've got to do the fire again, haven't I? Excellent! That's the Merlin's beard, an ancient Egyptian tomb. What's that noise? Conjuring birds at a time like this? Try something else. More scorpions. Find a way to get rid of them before they get too close. Well, there we go. Excellent. It's so small, it fell straight through the grill. Do that again. Excellent shrinking. Let gravity do the rest, eh? I see. That's what I was doing That's wrong. That's the last of them. I think you're in the... Wait. I thought I could just What's burn that them. Noise? Oh, oh. Leprechaut. That monster's back. He's too heavy. Watch out. This isn't good! No! <laughs> I fell down somewhere! Merlin's beard, where are we now? Heavens! Here's that monster sized scorpion again! You better cut this overgrown arthropod down to size quick! Excellent! You better cut this over. That'll do! It won't get any smaller! Try the fire-making spell to get rid of that scorpion once and for all. Oh, no good! Press triangle if you need a hint. Nicely done. Oh, oh. that wasn't it. Press triangle if you there need a hint. There we go. That was a bit oh, delayed. That's one way to snuff out a paper scorpion. Don't worry, it was only something conjured by your book after all. There's the Sphinx again. We must be in his inner sanctum. Well, let's see. 
You must solve three final riddles to prove your worth. Show me your wits are as sharp as your wand work and you will receive your reward. You have proven okay. that your magic is powerful, but a wizard or witch must master more than jinxes and charms. Leaping leprechauns! The place is filling with sand! You'd better answer these puzzles and fast! If you let this spell burn, it will make a pyre of pyramid. Yes! Superb! That's one puzzle passed. What's next? Phew. Which spell can make things smaller when they're blown out of shape? But it can't shrink wizards' heads, so don't think yourself too great. Hurry up! That sand will bury us soon. There we go. Ah, you've reached the final puzzle. But where is it? That slippery sphinx must have hidden it again. Use Apparesium to reveal it. Give me the puzzle. The final clue. You've proven yourself with spells, but in this test, what has been a better friend than any charm or jinx or hex? I think it means what you used more in the test, your head or your heart. Brilliant, spectacular. You used your head, of course. Are you ready to claim your prize? Yes. You'd better hurry up. Have you used your head or your heart in this test? Point your wand, then when you're ready, pull the T button to choose. Back again. Now, let's have a peek at this chapter's conundrum. His letter came from Hogwarts, and oh, Douglas was so pleased. He would have read the whole thing, but a boil needed squeezed. Ew. He would have packed his trunk himself, but thought he'd seen a fly doing loops and backward flip flops. It wasn't. Nice try. He liked the thought of lessons, yes, but Douglas didn't see why you had to pay attention and not try to jinx your knee. And tentacles were funny in a tickly kind of way. So why the teacher roared at him, he really couldn't say. It was, pay attention, Douglas, every single place he went. But Douglas didn't want to, and so letters home were sent. And his father wrote him strictly saying, Douglas, now be warned, you must finish things, you... Douglas put the letter down and yawned. Douglas liked to be distracted because he found it much more fun. His homework was abandoned and his spells and charms half done. He never really noticed just how far he'd slipped behind. But then someone dared poor Douglas to perform a jinx, not kind. It went so badly wrong that it is nicer not to dwell on Dougie's second nose or on the mess or on the smell. Ew. And nobody could ever say how Douglas came to be entrapped inside that drain pipe with a teacup for a knee. What was it that he didn't want to do, the silly lad? Answer me and do it and you'll make your teachers glad. Here's your certificate recording your progress. Pull it up from the book to have a look. Some improvement needed, but you've learned your spells all right. Take five house points. <laughs> yeah, I really wasn't that good at this chapter. I made a couple of mistakes. That's it, you finished the chapter. Close the book and choose another chapter. Which chapter are you going to take on next? 
when you've finished chapters one to four, you'll unlock. Okay guys, I'll stop this episode here and on the next episode we'll be starting chapter 3. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I shall see you next time guys.